Hello and welcome to another episode of Virtual Legality. I'm your host, Richard Hogue, managing member of the Hogue Law Business Law Firm of Northville, Michigan. And today we're going to talk a little bit about the business of video game sales, more particularly the business of video game sales from one of our favorite virtual legality participating companies. That is, of course, Blizzard, a part of the Activision Blizzard King family that, well, we've talked about a lot in this space. On your screen right now is a tweet from Overwatch, the brand of a video game made by Blizzard that says Overwatch 2 arrives October 4th, ushering in a new era for the franchise as a free-to-play live service game. Learn more about the game and our commitment to deliver frequent seasonal content updates that expand the game to ensure there's always something new to play. Now, if you're familiar at all with the video game Overwatch, you know that it was a 6v6 arena-based shooter that famously was not free to play, charged for entry, even as we could see the video game industry pressing onwards towards a free to play model for a lot of these types of multiplayer games. So this, which was actually an announcement from a couple of days ago, was something of interest to folks that have been following Overwatch and Blizzard for some time. But in order to understand all of why Blizzard made this announcement, how its fans might be feeling a little distressed about the nature of the announcement. We have to go back a couple of years. Before we do that, however, I do want to point out this channel is supported by viewers and listeners like you through Utreon and Patreon. If you have any interest in supporting the channel through one of those tiers, please do check it out because you can, like Falcus Vipus here today, sponsor an episode of the videos per month, and I very much appreciate that kind of support. So special thanks to Falcus Vipus, who has been supporting Virtual Legality now for a long, long time. Much appreciated, Falcus. Thank you so much. Now, as I said, this is a story that takes place over a number of years, and we're primarily going to be using The Verge as the articles that help explain all this. I think they've done the best job having researched this in kind of detailing everything that has gone on with respect to Blizzard and Overwatch 2. You see here on your screen, a November 1st, 2019 date. Now, obviously, that's pre-pandemic. We have to account for a certain amount of delays with respect to that. Also, in the last couple of years, Activision has its own problems, which, of course, we have talked about at length here in virtual legality. So, in all of that, Blizzard has been struggling with getting this game out. So, as of November 2019, they announced that instead of just grafting on new characters or new maps or new modes to a game that otherwise would allow for it in Overwatch, they were instead going to make a sequel, going the direction of Destiny and Destiny 2, rather than Fortnite, which is just Fortnite, with its new islands and its new characters and what have you. So this announcement came as something of a surprise when it happened. The Verge says Blizzard just announced Overwatch 2, the sequel to its popular team shooter, on stage, at BlizzCon 2019, with the original Overwatch released over three years ago. While Blizzard has continued to expand that game with new heroes, maps, and game modes, as one would expect, it hasn't gotten a major update like this in the lifetime of the game. And sitting here in June of 2022, it still hasn't. That's going to be part of the story. But by adding an actual story mode, the sequel will look to expand on the lore that Blizzard has slowly been building for the Overwatch universe over the past few years with in-game content and elaborate cinematic shorts. So again, if you aren't familiar with what this cartoon gorilla is doing, you're not alone. Overwatch was a multiplayer arena shooter thing, what they called a hero shooter, I believe. Uh, And they then had these cartoons like Pixar shorts that would go out and say that there were cool things happening in the world or to introduce a new hero or a new map but they never really impacted the gameplay at all. So Overwatch 2 was effectively announced in 2019 with the notion that the big deal is we're gonna add an actual PVE, a player versus environment game here, what we would ordinarily expect to be called something like a campaign. The Overwatch 2 announcement movie picks up after the variety of short films that Blizzard has released so far, seeing the heroes of Overwatch facing off against Null Sector, an invading robot force, as if we haven't fought enough robots, right Avengers? Unlike the original game, which was primarily a PvP multiplayer experience, almost uniformly outside of special events, the sequel appears to be emphasizing cooperative PvE content that will see players face off against a multitude of computer enemies in both story levels and more replayable hero missions. Again, this is the first thing reported on. This is the pitch that Blizzard is making in the fall of 2019. There are still PvP modes and maps too, with Blizzard promising a new core quote-unquote push mode, 
and the game will also still heavily feature six versus six team combat similar to the previous game. More on that in just a minute. Also new is a brand new visual style, which I have to be honest here. I've played Overwatch a lot, but I haven't played it in a number of years. There was a trailer for Overwatch 2 at the big Xbox showcase this past weekend. I couldn't have told you that there were any visual differences at all. That's on me. I'm sure people will leave comments saying, how could you not notice X or Y or Z changed in this character profile? And I apologize in advance. But at least as far as the overall aesthetic and look of the game goes, I have to say it looks very, very similar to my eye. The Verge continues, Blizzard is taking an unconventional approach to the sequel. Again, this is as of 2019, promising a shared multiplayer environment where current Overwatch players will be able to play against Overwatch 2 players in PvP multiplayer and will have access to all the new Overwatch 2 heroes and maps. And this, at the time, drove people a little batty, saying, what does that even mean? If I can just play everything in Overwatch 2 in Overwatch, what are you actually selling me? And the answer was, I think at the time, that we're selling you a player versus environment campaign. That's the pitch. That's what we're going to do. But it should be noted that 2019 was an interesting time for Blizzard. In fact, it was an interesting time that featured what I believe was the first long form series here in virtual legality. That's right. Activision was not in and of itself the first long form series. Neither was Epic the first. And you can check it out with these cool thumbnails before we got a design glow up is a blizzard of backlash in which Blizzard faced all sorts of backlash for doing bad things to one of their Hearthstone players, Blitzchung, for saying things positively about Hong Kong. And this became an entire series that resulted in things like me saying that the blizzard of backlash resulted in a con con uh, at the BlizzCon event and trying to apologize but not apologize, really looking at messaging in the first instance. If you're interested in any of that, I really like this series, please go check it out uh, because I think you will like it as well if you find yourself in virtual legality. But that's the context, right? So this is an early announcement. We're sitting here in 2022 with nothing to show for Overwatch 2 until we get to this past week. And this is an early announcement made in the context of a company that was getting a lot of flack for a lot of reasons. This is also when Diablo 4 starts getting mentioned. Now, I promised you I would talk about the fact that it's no longer 6v6. That was, of course, how Overwatch was originally structured. Overwatch 2 was switching over to 5v5, and that made the split between Overwatch and Overwatch 2 even more pronounced. And figuring out exactly what they were going to do with this brand became more of an open question. So this is as of May 20th, 2021, more than a year ago. They were showing off what this new look would be, what the new UI would be, et cetera, et cetera. But they knew that they weren't likely to actually launch the game in 2021. In fact, in this article towards the end, you can see it say, we're not gonna launch it until at least 2022. And that at least is interesting because as of this past weekend, we finally got an announcement that was indicated in that tweet that I started this video off with. Overwatch 2 launches October 4th as a free-to-play live experience. It's interesting. Overwatch 2 launches on October 4th, free-to-play on Windows, Xbox, PlayStation, and Nintendo. Anyone can join and anyone can play and take part in our always-on, always-evolving live service. This is the most significant release in Overwatch history since its debut, and it will begin with early access to a new PvP experience, heroes, maps, and more, with a new free-to-play model. At its core, we believe the game is a social experience that should be shared with everyone. They're gonna use this to justify their free-to-play approach. This shift to free-to-play will open up and make the world of Overwatch available to more people than ever before, removing the barrier of entry and making it easier than ever to quickly jump into a match with friends. Inclusion is a strong driving force for this decision. When we stick together and work as a team, there's nothing that can stand in our way. Now, inclusion, of course, is a watchword for Activision Blizzard right now. You'll see it in Bobby Kotick's mails. You'll see it in everything that they do to try to fend off what has been a very rough year for them in the news. It is also in this paragraph, if I might be so bold, a little bit of a fib, right? I am sure that the folks at Blizzard and others at Activision are all in favor of inclusion and having more people use their games. In fact, inclusion is an interesting term for having more customers use your product. Because the reality here from a corporate business standpoint is that you want people playing your game. What has been evidenced at least since the launch of Fortnite, but probably even before then, is that people are willing to engage with free-to-play games. And if you get the economics right, they're willing to make you a lot more money 
than if you were just selling them one disc in a package somewhere. Activision Blizzard has taken that into account and have now said, hey, we're going to go to a format that when we get done talking about it, will look a lot like Fortnite. But we're doing that for inclusion and not profitability. A little bit of a fib, as I suggested. Save the date for the Overwatch 2 reveal event. That was, as it turns out, today. Uh, Today, they showed a little bit more of the Junker Queen, Overwatch's 34th hero, and talked a little bit about the new era. Today at the Xbox and Bethesda Game Showcase 2022, we shared a glimpse of what we have in store for our game, including the new hero. We showed familiar heroes who have matured and grown over the years, and there was also a tease of a mysterious fox leading its team into battle. But nothing can compare to the incredible moments we've experienced with our community since the game launched in 2016, and there are many amazing memories still to be made. This journey is grounded in the original Overwatch pillars of inclusive, inclusivity, open-mindedness, and the idea that the world could always use more heroes. There's that term. Again, we are grateful to the Overwatch community, and we've created something special for you in return. Here, things get a little bit wonky. The Overwatch 2 Founders Pack. As a thank you to our original players, who, remember, paid in to the Overwatch ecosystem, albeit years and years and years ago, the Overwatch 2 Founders Pack will be free in-game to all existing players who own Overwatch. The Founders Pack will include two epic skins and an exclusive Founders icon, along with a surprise gift that will be announced before the game's October 4th release. Then there's some timing requirements and you have to turn the game on, et cetera, et cetera. But where things get wonky is as you can see here, Blizzard is announcing that if you already own the game, they want to get out in front in terms of messaging of the people that say, wait, if it's free to play now, if it goes free to play, and I've spent money on it, whether it's just buying the disc or in some other fashion, I want to make sure I'm not left out in the cold. So when you make a transition like this, very often these companies will go and say, okay, you get some kind of benefit. The weirdness, however, is with respect to what they're also starting to sell right now with respect to this Overwatch 2 product. Here we have the, I believe it's the US Shop Battle.net page for what is called Overwatch 2 Watchpoint Pack. And if we really break this down, this appears to be purchasing Overwatch 1 before any of this happens. And so has a nice amount of overlap. It's $40 and what do you get from it? You get immediate access to the beta. You get two legendary hero skins. Remember, that's the same reward that you get for already owning Overwatch, so it's unclear whether these are two different skins or two of the same. You get one premium battle pass, right? This game is moving towards that Fortnite format, which is you get a battle pass per season, and I think they've said they're nine weeks long. So this is a premium battle pass, which, if they follow along with the Fortnite model, is going to be something like $10 in value, somewhere around there, $9.50, $10.50, something like that. You'll also get 2,000 in Overwatch 2 virtual currency, which apparently they haven't named yet. Presumably when you go out with the marketing, you'd already have a name for what looks like a, a G or an O and an equal sign. They don't have that yet. Probably something like $20 in value, of course, with the best value here for $99 and things like that. That can change. You get an icon and then you also get Overwatch original recipe here. So ultimately, if you already own Overwatch, Maybe you already get this from the Founders Pack. You don't get the Battle Pass and maybe you don't get access to the beta. It becomes very, very unclear just from reading these particular news articles. Now, again, somebody will come into comments and say, actually, they explained it over here in the Reddit AMA that they did it three in the morning over here. Totally fine, but doesn't make it any easier for someone that's trying to engage with their product and did do a little bit of research before this video to kind of figure things out. So by the time you're talking about a Founders Pack, I think it's the same content over here, two legendary skins and this icon, but you don't get the beta, you don't get the battle pass, you don't get the extra bucks, and you already own Overwatch, so you don't get this. Uh, but they are, as it should be noted, selling this right away. And so the explanations really should come if you want to know more about it. Now, again, I said I'd use The Verge as kind of the skeleton outline of everything here because I think they did a good job today, especially, of updating, quote unquote, everything we know about Overwatch 2, just to give a little bit more of an understanding as to what just happened. So The Verge says Overwatch 2 season is in full swing. Over the weekend, Blizzard revealed that Overwatch 2's next closed beta will take place June 28th. Closed, but you can buy your way in, as we just saw, and it unveiled the game's 34th hero. Now, Overwatch's esteem, tells The Verge, has diminished of late, in part because of its developer, as we've talked about, Activision Blizzard has been through the ringer in terms of the news cycle, and because right after Overwatch 2 was announced, 
content updates for Overwatch Prime fell off a steep cliff. And I think this is where a lot of friction and a lot of resentment has built up among its audience, right? They announced this in the fall of 2019, and then The Verge does a good paragraph here of explaining why things weren't advancing. Echo, the game's most recent playable hero went live in 2020. And Kenizaka, the game's newest map, was released in January of 2021, which for all practical purposes is effectively 2020. So there's been this huge hole in content so that they could sell you more stuff, right? They say it's about inclusivity. They want to do different things, but they announced it because of the story mode. They announced it because they had to do this campaign. That's why they were doing a sequel, all this stuff. None of that is in there, right? If we go back and we look at this timeline, we see that we've got content over here, three new heroes, six new maps, 30 new skins, a battle pass, a mythic skin, and a game mode, which presumably is push on October 4th. Then you get to what I would expect would be the kind of normal cadence here, being one hero, one map, some more skins to buy or earn, a battle pass, and a mythic skin. And then in 2023, at an unknown date, PvE begins, right? That that isn't starting anytime soon, that they are effectively releasing this game early to what they announced it as, decoupled is the phrase we will see in the Verge article here, but not at all what they had pitched more than three years ago. Uh, at this point, or at the point when PvE will actually start up in some form or fashion. So that's what they've gone out with as the roadmap today, but it's not very helpful for folks that were looking forward to that PvE side of things and have been waiting with their stale and growing staler Overwatch 1 for years and years and years now. As The Verge says, outside of new skins, small challenge events that allow players to unlock cosmetics in the same rotating cast of seasonal events, a la Lucio Ball, being one of the characters playing soccer, there's been nothing meatier than just hold on, Overwatch 2 is coming for 17 months. Now here is where I say, once you start treating this as a live service game, as my buddy Ty Guy Travis over at the BitCast, which you can catch every Sunday at 11 a.m., likes to say, Travis pictured here, responding to one of my usual hot takes in the video game sphere, he says live service games are hard. And indeed they are but he gives a little bit more, let's say, leniency towards the fact that they are hard and what developers are trying to do than I do. I tend to come across things and say, well, that's fine, but it's not my problem. And the way that this has been described as happening, admittedly after I realistically stopped playing Overwatch very often, is essentially a kind of slap in the face to the fan base that was otherwise supporting them. Overwatch, great, we're gonna work on the sequel, we're not gonna give you anything anymore, sorry about that, and then we're gonna ask you to come back with a great deal of fanfare and hope that you're on board. The developers understand this, says The Verge, and game director Aaron Keller reassured fans during the Overwatch 2 announcement video that the days of waiting and wondering, when will my Overwatch content come back from the war, are over. Now, I probably wouldn't use that metaphor with the international conditions being what they are, but suffice it to say, it is still a sentiment that is understandable. When am I going to get an update? You're going to get it right now. Our plan is to deliver a steady drumbeat of new content every nine weeks through free seasonal updates, ensuring that there's always something new to play, chase, and unlock in Overwatch 2. Like many shooters and other live service games before it, Overwatch 2 is switching to a seasonal format whereby the developers plan to deliver content more regularly to fans. And here's that timeline we were just talking about. But of course, you have this big timeline bump with three new heroes and six new maps right at the top, and then it slows down to what is a little bit more expected. Probably a hero, probably a map every season. And what's in the battle pass? Nobody knows. Could it actually be heroes? Will it stick with cosmetics? What do you think? Do you trust Blizzard to make these choices correctly? Do you think Halo and 343 made their choices correctly? It is open season on whether or not this is going to be any good or whether it's going to give you the value that they would like it to have. And honestly, if Blizzard's use of Overwatch or even Diablo over the past few years is any indication, they're going to have to show me something personally uh, before I say, yes, that's a good idea. Overwatch Prime and critically fans' interest in Overwatch overall languishes the team shifted focus to developing Overwatch 2. With this new roadmap in place and the expansion of the Overwatch 2 team, Keller stated that they'll be able to sustainably support this new content focused vision. We've taken a lot of measures over the last few years to grow the team to be able to handle the amount of work it's going to take to put all of this content out there. We're over three times the size we were when the game first launched, and we are restructuring parts of the team so that we're able to work on multiple heroes at one time, multiple maps at one time, all while still looking at bigger features that are coming later to the service, such as 
PVE. Now, The Verge rightly points out that, hey, story content was one of the big new features promised with Overwatch 2. Fans reacted positively to story events like Uprising, Retribution, and Storm Rising, in which teams fought against bots. I'm really excited for Overwatch 2 campaign, Keller said, and it tells a complete linear story with a beginning and an end to it. But The Verge rightly points out that regardless of all those quotes, it's not here and it's not dated and it's not coming anytime soon, which means why are you releasing this game right now? However, during OW2's development, Blizzard decided to spin off this kind of campaign mode or PvE content from the PvP core in order to get the game into fans' hands faster. According to Keller, the new seasonal structure allows the team to release things when they're ready, and apparently Overwatch 2 PvE won't be ready until sometime in 2023. The parenthetical here from The Verge, this kind of piecemeal release strategy is becoming increasingly common for big games. There are still key parts of the Halo Infinite experience that haven't been released yet, for instance. And I again sit here and say, that might be a viable business strategy because the market will bear what it bears. And if it doesn't otherwise impact your bottom line, that's all well and good for you, Mr. Corporate Person. But as a player, I don't have to be excited or thrilled about the fact that you've pitched why you let this game languish now for multiple years. And now you're releasing it in order to get revenue in your door and aren't otherwise releasing the part that you pitched for people to get excited about. So if people aren't excited from the free-to-play announcement, if people aren't excited about the battle pass or everything else that you have said, I think that you should be understanding as to why, because their Overwatch game hasn't gotten realistically any updates in a long, long time, and now you're telling them that whatever it's going to look like in October is going to be largely the same, but you can wait for everything else that we've promised to be different. A battle pass system is coming along with the seasonal format. The developers declined to share what exactly to expect with the battle pass. Why would you tell us? It's only four months out from release and you're already selling a season on your store. What kind of exclusives fans could hope for or the cost? But they did say that information would come as the launch date approaches. And again, here is where I object. And you might think this is old man shouting at a cloud. I'm a cynical nihilist on this kind of stuff. I remain an optimist, but I do point out when I have issues with business strategies, you are selling this. We just talked about that. You are selling this on your store and you won't say what is in it. That's a problem for me. Maybe it's not a problem for the market at large. Maybe you know that. You know, the market's going to buy it anyway. The market's going to support you anyway. More power to you. But I'm going to sit here in this space and say that that's a problem for me. And I'm going to recommend it be a problem for other people that until you get that information, you shouldn't be buying things uh, from a company like this one or any one. This isn't a Blizzard specific critique. Along with the battle pass and the ability to pay a premium for exclusive content comes perhaps one of the bigger pieces of OW2 news. Loot boxes are going away. Now, that's its own interesting regulatory question and answer because loot boxes are one of those areas where a number of jurisdictions are coming down on them rather hard. We saw this with Diablo Immortal, another Blizzard product that's getting into a certain amount of trouble and that I might still cover in this space where that game was actually prohibited from sale due to its use of loot boxes in some jurisdictions that take that a little bit more seriously than others. So Overwatch 2 says, all right, we're not going to worry about loot boxes anymore. We're going to do this battle pass thing. Fortnite seems to be making money. Warzone seems to be making money. We'll just throw a battle pass at it. In the December update, the developers will add a storefront in which presumably fans will be able to directly pay for the desired skins instead of hoping to get lucky with loot box. Now, that's interesting in and of itself because, again, they're selling storefront coins, right? Over here. But this article says that that storefront isn't going to be available at the actual quote-unquote launch of Overwatch 2, but instead will come in the December update or Season 2 in the timeline that we have so far seen. So already... You've got this kind of feel, reading between the lines of a slapdash approach to getting this thing out the door. And the question is then raised, are they trying to get it out the door before Microsoft buys Activision Blizzard? And the answer might be yes. I don't know that for certain, and I'm not sure exactly what value it adds to the proposition for getting it out earlier, unless there's some kind of cash trickery that I don't yet see. But they do appear to be running it out the finish line quicker than I would have expected after already waiting years and years and years to get it even this far. In the December update, they'll get that storefront. But again, the developers did not elaborate on how much skins would cost or what would happen to all that banked in-game currency from Overwatch 1 and said to expect an update later. Don't worry, we're going to take care of you, Overwatch 1 players, just as good as we've been taking care of you so far. In addition, we see reference here to the 5v5 format because, as explained by The Verge at least, 
One of the biggest perennial complaints of Overwatch Prime was the absolute disgust fans had for the double shield playstyle. With Overwatch 2, the number of tanks, folks that can take hit point damage and otherwise use shields, the team can field has been reduced to one. So there won't be any of that double shield action in Overwatch 2. Might be an improvement. Leave a comment to this video if you're a big Overwatch player and you think that's an improvement. Sounds like The Verge does. Sounds like Blizzard does. I don't know it well enough to actually speak to that specifically. Another complaint about Overwatch, where are the healers? In a roster of 33 heroes, only seven of them are healers. The third and final new hero that's coming with the October 4th launch is the game's eighth healer. Now, it takes a tremendous effort from a legion of people, says The Verge, to make a video game, and Overwatch 2 may have had to tread a tougher road than other games. The game was announced three years ago amidst controversy as Blizzard was under fire for punishing a Hearthstone player who made a pro-Hong Kong protester statement during a broadcast. Though Blizzard later reduced the player's punishment and apologized. That's doing a lot of work here, but please do check out that playlist to see if I think that they apologized. Spoiler alert, I do not. Some fans felt that Overwatch 2's announcement was used as a smokescreen to distract from that news. Even if you're not an Overwatch 2 truther, which is itself an editorialization, right? Because that is suggesting that that isn't in fact the case or couldn't possibly be the case unless you're a kooky conspiracy theorist. The extended length of time between that announcement and any meaningful information about the game, aside from images of an updated hero skin here and the news of the elimination of a game mode there, didn't inspire much confidence that the game was announced when it was supposed to be. The game was delayed at least twice, once in February 2021 and again in November. Here's a paragraph about all of Activision Blizzard's problems over the last year and add to that the 2021 departure of Jeff Kaplan, the much beloved game director of the Overwatch franchise since it's released in 2016. And it becomes easier to understand that Overwatch 2 has been through a lot. But, says The Verge in conclusion, now that the release date is out there and Blizzard's turn on the news fire hose, these profound updates will hopefully make Overwatch 2 finally feel like the sequel it's meant to be. Now, I skipped a bunch of things. In this article, I will, of course, link it in the description. But suffice it to say, when I saw this news, the thing that jumped out at me more than anything else was this notion that they were going to release this thing despite not having the promised PvE content that was ostensibly holding all of this up actually in the package. Remember, they were showing their five-on-five version of the game as early as last May. And now they've just said, well, to heck with it. We're going to release what we've got. We're going to battle pass this up. We're going to give you a live services version of this game. It's not going to be any of that confusing stuff between Overwatch 1 and Overwatch 2. We are just, without the two, if this was just called Overwatch, we're just going free to play. Like so many other games before us, we'll try to make it right to the people that spent money on this. And we're going to move to a model that has made money hand over fist for other game companies and their product and hope everything works out. But how do you feel about this? Are you an Overwatch player? How do you feel about the hold that was done on content or support for years and years now? And how do you feel about this piecemeal approach to launching? Store's not going to be in when the game launches. PvE isn't going to be in when the game launches. And we're essentially expected to take on faith that Blizzard is going to do right by us if we choose to invest at all in their ecosystem as of right now. This has been Virtual Legality for today. If you enjoy the talk about business and law of video games, technology, pop culture, and more, please do consider supporting us at Utreon or supporting us at Patreon. If you do, one of those tiers available is to support a specific episode a month. Thank you so much to Falkus Vipus for doing that this month. Or if you'd rather just subscribe, tell your friends, upvote, downvote, comment, engage, share it around on forums. Every single little bit helps. Tell folks that we're having conversations like these in virtual legality. If you caught this on YouTube, thank you so much for watching. And if you listen to it as a podcast, thank you so much for listening. And I will catch you on the very next episode of Virtual Legality. Virtual Legality is a YouTube video series with audio podcast versions presented as commentary and for education and entertainment purposes only. It does not constitute legal advice and does not create an attorney-client relationship. If you have legal questions about the topics discussed, please consult your own legal counsel.